So I was working in the app the other day and adding some videos. And I realized that this interface could be a whole lot better. Not only that, there were several fields that I needed that were missing. There were a couple interesting topics that sprung from this. One was how to use Nux.js plugins in order to bring in uh, stuff that's just built for Vue. Another was how to turn some of our fields into markdown fields. And the last and probably most significant is how to upload things directly to S3 from Vue. All three of those subjects are going to get their own video, hopefully in the next week or so. What we're going to do today is all the other stuff that uh, is not big enough to take up an entire video on its own. But we're still going to do some interesting stuff. Our admin page is going to look like this by the end. We are going to add this cool video byline, which gives them the formatted duration and the formatted publish date. So with all that said, let's get started. So let's look at how our ad video page is right now. So the first thing we notice is that this is crowding out a bunch of stuff and it's not really that useful. It was more of a tech demo and we just kept it in. And so let's go ahead and remove that. So that'll be in admin videos new. You can remove that. And we can remove this row and column stuff as well. All right, that gives us a lot more room, especially in the description. So this is looking better. Let's test the workflow. So this, of course, is working fine. And when we hit Create Video, it takes us to the User Watch page. That might not be the best choice, though. We do have a Admin Show page. And there we can add tags. So it would be nice if we could go there instead. We can go ahead and change that. We can go to admin slash videos slash video ID, and that should work. We'll go ahead and test it out real quick. And yeah, that is a much nicer experience. You'll notice that if we go to the edit screen, then we have a similar issue. Not quite as bad, because you can find it again. But once we get more videos, uh, finding again to see the effects of your edits will be a pain. So let's go ahead and have the edit screen push to the uh, user to the video show page as well. So now we can edit and we can save and it'll take us here. And if we want to edit it again, if something didn't display as we expected, we'll put an edit button right here. So we'll put it after the combo box and it'll just be a V button and it'll link to this slash edit. All right. Nice and simple. Now that our workflow is improved, let's look at some of these fields. So on the API, I've already added duration, published at, and code summary fields to the video. For published at, that requires a Nuxt plugin. And so we'll be leaving that for the next video. But we'll be tackling duration and code summary today. Code summary is pretty simple. We'll just want another V text area. And in the V model, we'll connect it with video dot code summary. And then the label will be code summary. And that's all we'll do for now. 
In a later video, we'll make it work with Markdown. But for now, you've got a nice little field here. Now we'll do duration. So duration will be a little bit more complex. So duration on the server is just an integer. Uh, but here we can still represent it with a vtext field. We'll be recording the duration in seconds. So that's perfectly serviceable as an input but we can actually do a lot better. I mean, do you know off the top of your head how long 3,982 seconds is in minutes or hours? Probably not. So let's get the computer to interpret this for us. So first we will take our video.duration and we'll divide it by 60. And then we'll go ahead and run math.floor on that. And then we will uh, take our video.duration and take the remainder out of 60. And that'll give us the number of seconds. All right, so now we know that this is an hour, six minutes, and 22 seconds. We could add an hour thing as well as a minute and second thing, but I don't think we'll be putting on videos too much longer than an hour. In fact, most of them will be 5 to 15 minutes. So this is a pretty nifty ability to check. And uh, if you get something wrong, then you'll be able to see immediately that you did your math wrong. If this was a user-facing thing, then we might make this editable as well. But since this is just for the admin, it doesn't have to be as good. Let's go ahead and save this. And we wanna make this show up under the title so we can see how long it is. We could copy this and paste it uh, under the title, but I think we're going to want to use this enough that it's worth it to make a component. And so we'll call it duration display.view and we'll pass in a uh, duration and we'll just copy this in for now. Then here, under the duration field, we will use that duration display and pass in duration. We can go back here and see that it's working correctly. And then it'll be nice and easy to put this into our video ID index page. We'll put it right under the title. And then we will do all of our imports here. All right, so we have our duration displaying. Let's go ahead and make that italicized. That way we'll be able to tell a little bit better, set it apart from the description. And let's go ahead and add a little bit more here. Let's add the publish date. And we don't actually have that data from the server yet, but we can have a placeholder one so when we put it in in the next video, it'll start displaying in all the correct places. All right, so we will go ahead and put that uh, emphasis so it's clearly wrapped around several things. And then let's start uh, putting in our date. We'll want it to look something like 
this. And we'll make our duration display. We'll have this as a span instead of a div, so it can line up much better. All right, here we go. This styling isn't perfect, but it's a good start. It's at least understandable. Wanted a little bit more extra spacing, we could force some of that with ampersand in BSP. And so we get a little bit more space here, so they're more clearly differentiated. All right, so let's go ahead and get this going dynamically. And so we'll go ahead and have a computed property of published at, which uh, will end up being replaced by the one from the video. But for now, uh, we'll just return a new date. All right, nothing's gonna show up here. So let's uh, use the date and published at dot get full year. And so this should get us 2019. Excellent. And I've taken a look at the API and we could uh, do something like moment, but uh, for something this small, we can just use the regular JavaScript API. So and this will be git date or git day. Oh yeah, it's git date. And then the month first. If you're in another place, then uh, you might do something else, a different order, but this is the order we typically do it in the US. All right, so this is pretty good. Let's make this a little bit more clear. So published on and then the date. All right, excellent. This is some really nice information for our users, except our users can't see it because this is on an admin page. So we're gonna want to transfer this to right here and right here. And you know what that means? We're making a component. Our component will encompass basically everything within this. So we will cut that and use it to create our component. And we'll call this the video byline. And this leaves it open to put in other stuff later if we want. For example, if other people start publishing videos here, then we could put in the author name. All right, so we are going to want to bring in a video. And we'll also want to have the published at in here temporarily until we can get it from the video. All right, so we'll go ahead and use this here. And now instead of importing duration display in here, right, we have to import it in here. All right, so we're going to be importing the video byline And then we will use it right here. And we will pass in our video. And we can see that it's showing up the same as before. Now let's go put it on the other two locations where we want it. The first place is going to be in video list video. And we'll do it, uh, we'll do it in the vcard text. 
and we'll go ahead and import it and put in the components. All right, it's showing up here nicely. The styling could use a little work, but we'll handle that when we restyle this entire page. And now we'll add it here. So we'll go in here and we'll put it, once again, right below the title. Let's so put in our video byline, pass in the video, and then we will scroll down and we will import our video byline and we need to put in a uh, components hash. Let's double check to make sure there's not already one. Good, we're not overriding anything. And then put in the video byline. And there we go. It's displaying here as well. And once again, we're going to be improving this when we go over this entire screen in a later video. So now we've got some great new information displayed and we have some improved uh, workflow on this video editing and video creation. In the next video, we're going to use uh, Nuxt plugins in order to make it so we can input a date and time and then use that date in order to show up dynamically here. Then, in the video after that, we're going to show how to use Markdown in Nuxt and View and do a little bit of styling to make it look nice. And then we're going to make it so we can directly upload our videos and our thumbnail images to Amazon S3. So those are the next three videos. And after that, there's even more exciting stuff to do in making this site better. If you've got ideas on how to further improve it, let me know and you may see your idea in a future video.